I'm going to show you some of the different features of the pen tool and how the node tool can be used to tighten up line work. We're going on a bit of a tour around this piece, so to save time, I've saved a few viewpoints on the navigator panel. We're going to jump to the nose first and select the regular pen tool. With this tool, I can left click to create straight lines and sharp nodes, or hold the left mouse button and drag to create curves. When I'm drawing using this method, I like to turn on the rubber band mode on the context toolbar so I can see a preview of the line before I commit to it. If I'm coming out of a curve and I want a sharp node, I can hold Ctrl on a Mac or hold the left mouse button and click with the right on Windows to change the node to a sharp node. Keyboard modifiers are a great way to speed up your workflow. Descriptions can be found on the hint line down here. Another way to improve speed and efficiency are keyboard shortcuts. In this example, I can use the square brackets to increase and decrease the stroke width. You might want to edit your curves afterwards. We can do this with the node tool. You can find it on the tools panel or using the keyboard shortcut A. If I click a node, two smaller nodes become available and I can click drag them to change the curve. Each node has a type. A round node is a smooth node and a square node is a sharp node. I can convert it to a different node type on the context toolbar or I can right click it and select from the menu. If I left click and drag with the node tool, I can select multiple nodes and change their types together. I can click along the line to create new nodes or delete unwanted nodes by selecting them and pressing the delete key. I can hold the left mouse button on the curves as well and pull them where I want them. The nodes act like anchors keeping the other lines in place. The smaller nodes on a smooth node will always be opposite each other. However, I can hold Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows and move them separately if I need to. In doing this, the node will automatically convert to a sharp node. Let's go to the next example. There are a few other modes for the pen tool. I'll use P to select the pen tool and look at the modes on the context toolbar. Let's have a look at the smart mode next. Left clicking in this mode creates smooth nodes, which results in flowing curves. It's really useful for quickly lining curved parts of a design. When I've finished, I can press escape to terminate the line and also deselect the curve. For my next example, I'm going to use the polygon mode, which acts in the opposite way to the smart mode. I'll switch the stroke style to dashed line for this example. This mode only uses straight lines and sharp nodes, so it's great if you don't want any curves at all. Again, I'll press escape to finish the curve. This curve has been placed above the stars, so this is a great opportunity for a keyboard shortcut. I'll move it down the layer stack using Command on a Mac or Control on Windows and the left square bracket until it sits beneath the stars. Finally, we have the line mode. I'll just move back to the solid line style and select the line mode. This mode creates straight lines after the first node and automatically terminates the line after the second node. Let's have a look at the actions next. You can build and break your curves with actions on the context toolbar. I'll show you how to do this by creating the eye. I can create a perfect circle with the ellipse tool by holding shift to constrain proportions. I can also hold command on a Mac or control on Windows to resize around the center. Next, I'll select convert to curves on the context toolbar. This changes the circle from a shape to a curve. Now, if I switch to my node tool, I can left click to create nodes in the places where I want to break the curve and left click drag to select them both. On the context toolbar next to Actions, I can select Break Curve, and my curve will be split at the selected nodes. Now if I use V to switch to my Move tool, I can delete the part I don't need. You could also do this with the Knife tool. Now I can finish the eye with the regular Pen tool. Finally, I'll quickly show you how to make your pen curves more dynamic. First, use any of the pen modes to create a curve. I'll line this cat's ear. 
Then I'll open the pressure profile settings on the stroke panel. The nodes are locked together by default, but if I click into it, I can unlock the node and now I can move it independently. Here I've created an asymmetric pressure profile. If I'd like the other end to be tapered, but I don't want to change my pressure profile settings, I can use the reverse curve action on the context toolbar. This is particularly useful for curves that use arrowheads. So that was a look at the different modes and features of the pen tool and the node tool. They're well worth getting to know because there are so many possibilities for designing using only these two tools. Thanks for watching.